Good morning and welcome to The Core Connection. I'm Mira Rubin here with you on Enlightened World Network. And today's topic is battling the unfamiliar. Um, because it's unfamiliar, whether it's good or not, sometimes uh, we are so threatened by the unfamiliarity of something, the newness of something, that um, we invoke the conditions we were trying to change just because at least we know what to expect with them. So it's an interesting dynamic. Uh, and we'll discuss that this morning. And good morning. Good morning, Rosalyn. Welcome. So good to have you here with us this morning. And everybody else who's joining us, welcome. And uh, before we get started with today's topic, let's take a couple minutes to get present. So let's take a deep breath in through your nose and hold it. And imagine clean, crisp oxygen flooding your lungs, flowing into your bloodstream, nourishing all your cells, all your organs, bringing vital life energy to your body and being. And as you exhale, exhale any tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's take another deep breath in through your nose and hold it. And this time, imagine brilliant, bright light lighting you up from the inside out, illuminating, electrifying, and energizing all your cells, all your molecules, all your electrons, and creating a brilliant beam of light and energy from your heart out into the world. And as you exhale, exhale any remaining tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's press our palms together and vigorously rub our hands together. Feel all those sensations, feel the tickling, the tingling, the pressure, um, all of it, and allow all those sensations to bring you present right here, right now, into this remarkable physical form that enables you to experience life. Good morning, good morning, and welcome. Welcome, Jenny. Great to have you here with us this morning. And again, welcome to everybody else who's joining us. So we're talking today about battling the unfamiliar. And um, this came up out of a session with a client as so much, so many of these stories do, right? And um, it was fascinating. It was really, really powerful and fascinating because uh, this person has had experience with a lot of um, a lot of anxiety and um it was it was fascinating so what happened was their their experience was that there was this this man that uh was sort of a a, a very big man and he would be screaming in my client's face telling him that things were going to go terribly and and um, that they couldn't do anything about it and really just threatening them on all different kinds of levels. And <laughs> this is wild because, you know, clearly this, whatever this image was that was showing up was an incredible bully. And, and I, first asked if my client had ever hollered back at the bully. And um, we had talked about therapy that they had done at one time where they were, um, I, I, it was, I guess it was some kind of rage therapy. I, I don't know, but um, they were counseled to be hitting a, a pillow with a, with a tennis racket. And um, so we came up with the idea of just hitting the bully with a baseball bat. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so the bully's yelling at him. And I guess he hauled off and hit him with a baseball bat. And the bully got smaller. And then, then the bully disappeared. And I mean, really just disappeared. And the client was 
kind of in shock that, oh my gosh, where'd he go? You know, is he really gone? And and for a couple minutes, and it was amazing how quick this was, for a couple minutes, he experienced this wonderful spaciousness and felt like he could breathe for the first time in who knows how long. And then they they said, I can't believe that he just disappeared, that I hit him with the baseball bat and he went away. And so I said, well, be alert to the language that you're using. You know, you said you can't believe it. So don't don't take this opportunity to recreate it. I mean, you you can he said there's all this spaciousness and then then because it's so familiar because it's so familiar he started thinking about dark energies that were hovering in the wings you know that were just sort of hiding out on the edges and starting to encroach on that spaciousness and thankfully, this happened while we were together because we were able to say, well, why not instead of those dark energies, you know, instead of pulling them back in because they're familiar, what about pulling in the energies of light that you connect to? And so they started doing that. And, um, you know, that ended up being their homework, so to speak, is to be connecting with the light energies in that spaciousness, because it was it created some kind of vacuum. Not only did it create some kind of vacuum, but it was so unfamiliar that in almost immediately, like really within five minutes, of experiencing this spaciousness, they started invoking the thing that they had just relieved themselves of and the thing that it is their dearest wish to be free of. And I, I just, I found it so fascinating because this is not really an anomaly. I think that this is something that many of us do is we work to make change I, I, and then in the face of that change we have like a boomerang effect and what i mean by the boomerang effect is that you know we're we're making progress and then the old thing resurfaces even more dramatically with, with an even louder voice, so to speak, or we recreate it, we, we re-invoke it because it's such a familiar pattern. So it was interesting because we got into a conversation about epigenetics and epigenetics, and this is my layperson's interpretation, so please don't take this to the bank, but epigenetics is basically, in my understanding, saying that while we may have genetic predispositions to certain things, we can alter the way that those genes express or don't express by creating certain circumstances, like environmental circumstances. Um, emotional circumstances, the way we think, the beliefs that we hold, that, that those beliefs and the way that we think end up impacting the way that our genes express. And another aspect of it is that the, um, our genetic makeup is 
essentially a um, blueprint of where stressors will likely target. So let's say I'm fine, everything seems fine, and then I undergo a profound stress event. If I have a predisposition to certain genetically predisposition to certain expressions of that, whether it be cancer or heart disease or blood pressure issues or whatever, then it's it's possible and maybe likely that that's where that stressor will um, activate in in a pre in a in a genetic predisposition so it's it's different to say that there's a predisposition to something and saying that that's a a sentence for you know like that that is something that is definitely going to happen we can we can mitigate our risk factors through lifestyle in a lot of ways, you know, body, mind, spirit kinds of things. So, you know, it was a very, very interesting conversation. And that part of the conversation also, we were talking about the chemical set, you know, this person was saying, well, what if this anxiety is genetic and isn't it creating, isn't it a chemical imbalance? And so the thing is, again, the lay person's perspective, but the thinking is, again, that, um, yes, anxiety creates a chemical set, as does joy, as does anger, uh, as does fear. You know, there are all these different chemical sets associated with different emotions. And as we become more deliberate if we become more deliberate in evoking invoking uh different emotions then we actually are changing our chemistry and so it's not I mean, there there are times when people are so maxed out and so stressed that they need assistance to get to some kind of more level state to be able to function. But um, we also can can make a lot of change through diet, through exercise, through meditation, through doing things we enjoy, et cetera, et cetera. But the thing is, I believe we become addicted to the chemistry set that is our predisposition. So for me, I was depressed for years and years and years, and there was a chemistry set associated with that depression that that was that um made it as unhappy as unhappy and um miserable as i was it made it a familiar place to be it was like comfortably uncomfortable or comfortably excruciating but it was comfortable in, in, in that it was really familiar. My body was acclimated to all that chemistry. And so, you know, it, it would, that would be where I would go if something happened, I would go into depression because the, the pathways there were so, like super highways. They were so strengthened through experience. So Rosalind says, identity, being void of one is more threatening than the familiar, even if the familiar is the end of the spectrum we want to change to the more positive side. Exactly. So 
the the notion of letting like if we identify with anxiety or we identify with depression meaning i am depressed like that's who i am or i am anxious or i have a um an anxiety issue or i have brown eyes if whatever those things are if we identify with those things uh as our being um then to let go of that identity if to let go of that identity becomes very threatening because then who am i if i'm not my brown eyes you know if i'm not my my um career if i'm not my role in my family who am i and the not knowing becomes frightening even if the things that we think we know are also frightening that you know they they're familiar so jenny says i believe my stage 3 chronic kidney disease has progressed well i hope that that's not true jenny i you have such a world of challenges it's un imaginable to me what it must be to be one human being facing all that you faced it's just so much and when we can create a condition of joy despite our circumstance sometimes sometimes not always sometimes our circumstance changes you know at least the way that we relate to it can change this is something that we have power over is how we how we relate to our circumstances and jenny i hear you saying that you've had a terrible life i and it's unimaginable to me that how, what you've been through and you've had a life that has had profound experiences tremendous experiences and and hopefully i mean as horrible as the experiences are if you can mine them for wisdom or you can mine them for um perspective or compassion or you know because the experiences are the experiences and all you can do is find some place of peace for yourself that transcends the circumstances and that's really what the challenge